Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day at 8 a.m. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Green Power Motor stock by analyzing its financial statements and dissecting its financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Green Power is a Canadian electric bus manufacturer. The company makes multiple models of high floor and low floor vehicles. This includes transit buses, school buses, shuttles, and double-deckers. It manufactures all electric buses that are battery-powered and zero emission. It's headquartered in Vancouver, but it's manufacturing facilities in Porterville, California, which is three hours north of LA. Let's get started with the model. This is a small cap company, 335 million market cap. They're trading at 1827 a share and they have 19 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you forecast a future free cash flows and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see the company has negative free cash flow every year. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And they also have negative net income every year. They had zero revenue in 2017, then 4 million in 2018, then it went up 50% to 6 million, then it more than doubled to 14 million. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, below that is cost of revenue. So they do have positive gross profit each year, but their operating expenses are higher than their gross profit, so they have negative operating income each year. This is pretty common with startups. It looks like they paid over $2 million of interest on their debt. They also have a small amount in other income. So each year they have negative net income. Their financials are as of 331. So their 2020 financials were as of March 31st, 2020. Their sales for the six months ending 930 are 5.1 million. Their 2020 revenue was 14 million. So half a year will be about 7 million. The reason their sales were less in the trailing six months was because of COVID. This is a statement of cash flows, and to calculate free cash flow, it's operating cash flow, which is on top, minus capital expenditures. So they have a pretty small amount in CapEx. And of course, they have negative free cash flow every year since they have negative operating cash flow. They seem to be running their business on debt and equity. They issued 624,000 stock in 2017 and 4 million in 2020. In terms of debt, they issued 5 million, 5.4 million, and 2.7 million. This is what you have to do when you start a company. You need money from somewhere, and you generally don't get it from your operations because you're running out of loss. So you have to issue debt and equity. The goal of any business is to operate at a profit and eventually pay your investors in terms of dividend or stock appreciation. Let's look at a capital structure. They have negative $1 million of equity. That means their liabilities are greater than their assets. They have $12 million of debt and their net debt is also $12 million. Their weighted average cost of capital is 17.4%, and that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 865 million. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $458 million. We divide that by 19 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $24. They're trading at $18, so they're trading at a 24% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street is a lot higher than me. They're at $46 a share, so they're saying the stock is 60% undervalued. So the company IPO'd recently, and you could see the stock really shot up at this point because there was big news about the EV market. Then it came down a little bit, so it's sitting around $18. In the past 52 weeks, this stock went down 13%. That's a lot worse than the S&P 500, which went up 15% in the same time frame. Their 52-week range was between 822 and 3250. And they're currently trading at 1827, which is above its 50-day moving average and above its 200-day moving average. So when a stock is trading above its 200-day moving average, it's considered to be in a long-term uptrend. If the 50-day moving average falls below the 200-day moving average, this is known as a death cross. And when the opposite happens, it's a golden cross. So it's currently a golden cross. A golden cross is considered a bullish signal and a death cross is considered a bearish signal. The company's average volume in the past 10 days was 1.64 million. A trading volume above 20 million provides good liquidity. And of the 19 million shares outstanding, 14 million are available to investors. Investors prefer a high percentage of shares on float. 
I prefer to invest in securities with above 50% float, which this is. Only 10% of the shares are held by institutions. And about 4.5% of the shares are shorted. That's a pretty low short percentage, so investors are bullish on this stock. If you invested $10,000 when this company IPO'd, you'd have $8,700 today. In 2014, the company launched the EV350, a 40-foot all-electric bus. And this bus can go 185 miles or 300 kilometers. And the company developed the first double-decker EV bus. This was called the EV550. That was delivered in 2016. It could fit 100 people and go 300 miles. In 2017, the company built its 150,000 square foot factory in Porterville, California. And the city of Porterville ordered 10 EV buses. This purchase made Porterville the first all-electric city in North America. The company makes the EV Star, which can go 150 miles. They also have the EV Star Plus, which can seat 24 people. They also have the EV Star Go, which is a cargo van for one person. They have the EV Star Go Plus, which is a two-seater. The EV Star CC, which can see three people. They also have the Beast, and that stands for Battery Electric Automotive School Transportation. The Beast can last 150 miles on a battery charge. In the third quarter of 2020, the company did the following. They delivered 21 buses. They received orders for 100 EV Stars and 10 Beasts. The EV Star may win a contract for 150 vehicles. They entered into an agreement with ABC Bus for 100 vehicles over three years. This is their quarterly sales. Five vehicles in the fourth quarter of 2018, then six in the next quarter, then six, then 27, then 27, then eight, then 18, then 21. A majority of the company's manufacturing is outsourced to China, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. If there are tariff hikes with China, that could really hurt this company. Up to 80% of the purchase price of its vehicles is subsidized. One of the goals of President Biden is to subsidize 100% of EV sales. If there is 100% subsidies on EV vehicles, this stock will go through the roof. I found this article that really bashes green power. This analyst said its warehouse in California only stores vehicles. It doesn't do any manufacturing, it just stores vehicles that it imports from China. And this person says their EV Star is actually a relogoed version of Chinese manufacturer Y Chase Urice electric minibus. He also says that since Green Power doesn't buy in America, it can't receive federal subsidies. It can only receive state subsidies in California, but not in any other state. And this person's target price is $1.50 per share. The company's top shareholders are Fraser Atkinson, the CEO at 9.26%. BNPP Asset Management at 7.2%, Jerry Conrad at 6.5%, David Richardson, Great Canadian Factoring, Malcolm Clay, and Arosa Capital Management. The company's stock is traded on the Toronto Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ, and the Deutsche Börse in Germany. The average age of its leadership team is 45 years, and the average tenure is 2.3 years. The CEO has been with the company one and a half years and the compensation package is $200,000. Let's look at the financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 12.3, the median is 14.8, PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have negative PE. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share, they are 25.8, so investors are paying $26 for $1 revenue, a lot worse than the median and average. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. They have negative equity, so they have negative price to book. Equity is assets minus liabilities on the balance sheet. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They have negative EBIT, so they have negative interest coverage ratio. ROE is net income over equity. They have negative net income and negative equity, so we can't look at this. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can cover their current liabilities with their current assets. And their current assets consist of $300,000 of cash, $1 million of receivables, and $6.6 .6 million of inventory. So their free cash flow in the trailing 12 months was negative $5 million, and their working capital is $1 million. So it looks like they need to take on more debt or issue more stock just to run their business the next 12 months. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos on Ford, GM, Lee, NEO, Solo, Tesla, Workhorse, and Xpeng, all in the same industry as Green Power. 
And if green power has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they're worse than PE because they have a big negative. They are better in price to sales. That's the only ratio they're better than the average. They have a terrible price to book. Their current ratio is above one, which is good. They don't have an ROE, they're 100% debt, and they're the smallest company in this industry. So to summarize, I do have them trading at a 24% discount because I see the future potential with this company. But of course, anything can happen. I'm projecting their sales will grow. They might not. It's hard to predict what other companies will enter this space and how well this company will develop over time. But since the EV market is getting more and more prominent, it is really beneficial that they have their operations in place as opposed to a new company which would have to build out the operations. Of course, there is competition with big automakers and of course with bigger EV companies like Tesla. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.